All right, now Kathleen Trenchard is a native New Orleanian, New Orleanian, graduate of the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, masters in painting and printmaking. She maintains a studio at a home on Woodlawn Lake. And shortly after she got to San Antonio in the late 80s, she began exper experimenting with a Mexican mallet and chisel technique you might have heard of called papel picado. And since then, she's written a book you've probably seen around. It's called Mexican Paper Cutting. It was published back in 19... 98 by Lark Publishing, in case you want to buy it online, has a collection of paper cuts from her international travels. She taught at SAC, Palo Alto for 10 years, also continues to present lectures, demonstrations, and workshops on paper cutting. She also maintains a website called cutitout.org, cut-it-out.org, and has permanent installations you might have seen as well at the AT&T Center, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, the Grand Hyatt here in San Antonio, as well as Cleveland Park in El Paso. Please welcome Kathleen Drenger. Good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm a little shorter than Ernest. <laughs> um, now, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, my follies and my fantasies tonight. So bear with me, it's gonna be very focused. And uh, vamos a bailar. I'll be focusing on these fantasies and fallacies, follies in chronological order and how they inspired my artistic development um, from my 17, year 17 and um, to the present. When I moved to New York, I continued with the flamenco, which was my first love, but I also discovered Balinese dance. Balinese dance. When I moved to New York, I continued the flamenco, but now I was studying Balinese. And um, here I am, inspired by one of my dreams. This is about giving birth while singing an aria from Madame Butterfly. I was trying to convey music and slow motion in my oil paintings at this point. It was sometimes difficult reconciling my passion for dance with my need to paint and draw. I wanted to become my paintings and my paintings wanted to dance. Um, when I moved back to New Orleans, I was now performing flamenco dance. Uh, here I am at the Hilton Hotel in New Orleans with one of my huerga flamencos. Ole. <laughs> Pretty soon I'll be a, um, a Pechacucha uh, has-been. So that I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, I was performing Balinese dance as well in New Orleans at concerts and festivals such as the Jazz and Heritage Festival. So I was really living out my fantasies and dreams at this point. This is a typical example of one of my drawings from this period. Perhaps you can see the inspiration of Japanese style art and Mary Cassatt. Then when I moved to San Antonio, I became absorbed in the art of Mexican paper cutting, as Randy just told you, and the celebration of Dia de los Muertos. So I traded my paintbrush for my hammer and chisels and knives, and my first Calavera victim was Frida Kahlo, who, uh, was uh, an icon, still is. And here I have her painting, her self-portrait, and her Casa Azul, which I had just visited. Now here I wanted to convey movement and music in my new me medium, paper cutting. And I revisited my old sketchbooks and found some quick sketches, which I then translated into paper cuts. This is my old teacher, Ciro, who now lives in Madrid. Next, I discovered tango dance. 
I invited La Catrina, Jose Guadalupe Posada's icon and satire on the Mexican porfiriata, to join me in a tango dance. This work is symbolic of how much I revered Posada's work and the Mexican tradition of Day of the Dead. Now we have a play on the words tango, T-E-N-G-O, to have, and tango, the dance. Once again, trying to depict movement, music, and passion. I finally realized a long-standing dream by visiting Bali, where I performed and studied Indonesian dance, shadow puppetry, and music. In Bali, I learned how to make my own shadow puppet from buffalo hide using tiny versions of the chisels. I already used these chisels in paper cutting, but these were even tinier than those. And then I performed there with the puppet that you saw in the beginning. She was supposed to seduce Arjuna when he was meditating in the forest, but she failed. That's why he's a prince. Now this is another reworking of an old drawing into a paper cut. And you can see I was still very obsessed with shadow puppetry and trying to merge real life with fantasy. Now last year I visited Argentina and this is La Boca, which is like the Caribbean colors of New Orleans, but on acid. <laughs> Except here in Argentina, the dancing never stops. So reliving another fantasy here. This is a large paper cut wall hanging, one of a series commissioned by a Las Vegas collector who wanted Latin dancers as calaveras or skeletons. Olé. And then I have another wall hanging from an early Luminaria event paying tribute to Teresa and El Cura, our local flamenco family. Um, this was done before the recent passing of El Cura, I'm happy to say. I enjoy creating a shadow <clears throat> of the image on the wall behind the piece using focused lighting. Same thing here. Now this is another wall hanging from the Commission Latino Calavera series. And with the intricate open work you see here, can you imagine the dance of shadow coming alive on the wall behind it? Anda chica. And then this is the last of the Calavera dance series. I cut this shortly after my recent trip to Buenos Aires. And I was inspired by the elaborate painted borders, murals, signs, and even body painting. So the fun and the folly continue. And to quote from another icon, I was born like this. Muchísimas gracias a mí, los amigos, los amigos. And um, viva Petra Kucha. Thank you, Kathleen. You can't leave yet. I just have a couple of embarrassing personal questions. Uh, okay, that you have an incredible range from dance to art to um, all, all these things floating in your brain. From when you were a kid, what did you want? I know there's a lot of young people here maybe want to be artists and working toward getting commissions, working at a university, having their own studio like you do. Uh, first of all, your, your process. And did you know what you were going to do when you were this age, some of these young well, people? First, I wanted to be a saint. Then I wanted to be a martyr. Then I wanted to be an actress. <laughs> I always wanted to be an artist, but my family was really encouraging the art. But then I wanted to be a dancer, and they were not encouraging that at all. So the, the dance became like this shadow of the professional me and the passion. It was mm -hmm. like, that's what I wanted to evoke, you know, my passion behind the person. But there's the professional, that's the artist. And it's the Gemini effect. June 8th. Ah, the psycho Gemini. I can say that. I'm <laughs> the twins. I'm Gemini. So, uh, <laughs> what? How do you? What's the process of working those? Those? 
how big are those things, and are they cut with a mallet and chisel instead of scissors? Or well, the biggest one I've ever done was in the AT&T Center, and that's 18 feet high, and it's about um, 18 feet wide on two sides, mm -hmm. so two times 18 by 18. And you start with a drawing. Always start with a drawing, but the drawing does not... The drawing is good to organize my ideas, but then I improvise even after I had the drawing. But it's not scissors. You can take a mallet out. No, I, I, I do a combination of scissors, but mostly hammer and chisel and X-Acto knife. With, I use all three mediums. With big paper, 18 feet wide. And high. I, I remove all the furniture from my living room and dining room and the two take over the space and work on the floor. I so like do you to work dance around? I'm trying to just picture this in my mind. <laughs> I'm going to stretch this while our camera guy is getting some pictures so they'll be on camera. Uh, so you just like, man, I mean. That's why I have a big living room and dining room because sometimes I need to dance. Uh -huh. Like this morning I had to do my dancing. And then I need to do my big work. I haven't seen a video story on you. Have I seen, have I missed that? Has KLRN done anything? Rick Casey, anyone? No? Brandy, let's dance. Oh! <laughs> You know, if our camera wasn't here right now, <laughs> I still wouldn't dance, but... No, that's great. So, uh, where would people, uh, they can commission your work? They can... Yeah, they, okay, I'm alive and well on the internet, at the, the uh, Cut It Out a website that you just mentioned, and um, I'm by appointment, and if you are out bipolar, there, and but... you have a gallery, and you want to give me a show, vamos a bailar. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kathleen Trenchard on the Thank you.